Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another episode of Rune News. I am your host, Ryan Ryan, and as always, it's bloody good to have you guys here in the audience today. Jagex has made some changes to the rules around plugins when it comes to third-party clients, including RuneLite and HDOS, and they've made a few tweaks to last week's update, and of course, they've added some combat tasks for Valamor finally, which I'm sure you're all willing to uh, sink your teeth into when the game is back online. But before we dive into today's update, I would like to ask you a simple question for you to answer in the comment section down below, and that is, what RuneLite plugin can you not live without? Pick one RuneLite plugin, let me know what that is and what it does, because I'm interested to see what sort of plugins out there that you guys heavily feel like you rely on that improves your gaming experience and that you'd like to see them bring to their developing client on the C++ engine when they get round to it, if it's not already on there. And I'd greatly appreciate it if you considered liking and subscribing while you're downstairs. I would really appreciate it. The support goes a long way. My name is Ryan Ryan. You're watching Rune News and you're watching Rune News. This week's update for Old School RuneScape consists of Undead Pirate Tweaks, Valamor CAs, and more. We won't spend too much time on the Undead Pirates because I know you guys don't really care too much about wilderness content. You want to get into the more interesting part of this update. But basically, they've made it more convenient to kill Chaos Druids. The uh, Teleblock is now removed when you leave the wilderness, which it should have always done that. I don't know why it wasn't before. Uh, the drop rate for the Teleport Anchoring Scroll and the Zombie Pirate Locker has been made 1 in 275 which is incredibly low. I thought I thought the teleport scroll was like 1 in 6,000, someone was saying. So I'm not sure if that was a mistake on their end, but 1 in 275 is not bad at all. They've also made it so people were dropping resources inside the boss case for RTO, Spindel, and Calvarion, and basically the resources were despawning in like 3 seconds, and it was very frustrating. They've made it now that the bosses won't attack you instantly when they spawn. They'll give you a couple of seconds to get your shit together, and you've got about 15 seconds now before things start despawning on the floor. It still stops people from stacking up supplies and resources, especially when PKs are around, and it should give you enough time to manage your inventory and use your looting bag to get as many resources together as you can. Makes sense. If you don't have a looting bag, you'll get one when you pay the fee at the agility course. Nothing else really is too important to uh, mention here. The hard clue step formally requiring you to enter the wilderness agility course has been moved to here instead now, so you don't need to go into the agility arena anymore. It's not gonna cost you 150K to do that step. And uh, what's this one here? The similar master clue step has been moved to just southeast of the course, keeping an eye out for traffic between Laren's chest and revamped agility course. It's there if it fucking affects you. If it doesn't, who cares? Let's move on to more important content, Valamor Combat Achievements. Now, this is for Perilous Moons and the Fortis Colosseum. What does this mean exactly? You guys know exactly what this means. This means that there's going to be 10 to 15 videos flooding your YouTube newsfeed for the next three weeks of Jagex Stoma Zuckhelm. You're gonna see it from Tasty, you're gonna see it from Solar Mission, you're gonna see it from It's Will. Name a content creator with a Zuckhelm, they're gonna hit you with it. So strap yourselves in for some exhilarating and definitely not repeatable content, boys, because it's gonna be a fucking slippery slope from here. But the Perilous Moon uh, tasks look pretty simple. They go from medium to elite, so if you have your elite helmet done, which we just finished yesterday on Ray Sism, uh, we will have to go through and do these combat tasks to catch those points back up. As for the Colosseum, they start at Elite and go up to Grandmaster with the 24 minute time being the fastest speed run requirement, which is pretty handy. The world record's like 16 minutes or some shit, so not too bad. Pretty decent task here. They don't look too difficult to complete, especially Perilous Moons. It's some free points for you guys. Should help you get along with your medium and hard tasks as well if you haven't achieved those uh, benchmarks already. Looking good. Not, not, not a bad list, to be honest. Go through it and check it out if you want to, but let's move on to the third-party client guidelines update. Now, this is where things are changing with your clients. This includes RuneLite and HDOS. Basically, uh, the following have been adjusted, or, uh, sorry, they've, let me refresh this in case they've fixed their spelling mistake, because I don't fully understand what they're trying to say here. All right. In other news, we're updating our guidelines for third-party clients. The following have been adjusted. Uh, they haven't changed it. Okay, so just bear with me here. The following have been adjusted our disallowed features list. Any plugin which unhides, hides, or moves components of the Spellbook interface, resizing components to the Spellbook interface is still prohibited. So I'm assuming you're now allowed to hide, unhide, and move components of the Spellbook interface. You just can't resize the Spellbook, which makes sense. 
uh, any plugin which adds additional menu entries which cause actions to be sent to the server. This one now ex uh, includes exceptions for the Max Cabin Direct So I believe what they're doing here is they keep adding teleports to the game and people are getting frustrated that they have to scroll through menus to be able to find the teleport they want. They're going to allow you now once the plugin, I guess, has been developed and they want to put this on their main client as well, but you'll be able to ha now have like a um, shift right click or just a right click option to have certain teleports that wouldn't typically be on the front page of your teleports to be available for you on the right click option, if, if that makes sense. If you're not following, it's okay. I can kind of go into more depth in, a, in another video, but basically let's say you go to teleport on the Max Cape and you have to scroll two pages to get to play around house, for example. I'm not sure where that's listed on, on the Max Cape, but let's just use that as an example. You can now have the Runelight plugin to make that teleport come to the front. You can just right click house teleport. You don't have to scroll through menus. And as the game develops, they add more teleports. You're gonna have more shit added to that list right and the list just gets longer and longer so this is actually a win it's more or less basically just making teleport management more convenient for mostly the max cape and the diary cape but that it, it's a good thing don't worry about it and then you've got the plugin uh, any plugin which modifies menu options for construction such as prioritizing build or remove options so this used to be illegal but i believe they're now making this legal and they want to put this in their main client as well eventually I think this is gonna stop you from having to do like one six, one six, or a right click build, I think. No, the one six, sorry, ignore me, I'm a dickhead. It's to stop you from right click removing, right click building. I think it's gonna allow you to just basically have left click construction, which should save your wrist from pretty much exploding at the end of the computer after two hours of it, but it shouldn't really affect XP rates, I'm hoping, so. That's what I believe is happening. If I'm wrong, correct me in the comment section down below. Pretty big updates for skilling. They're not touching anything else, so. Fair enough, they haven't mentioned anything about that plugin for um, Dog Watch or whatever it's called, but I'm pre pretty sure they're, uh, they've removed that or they're adjusting it anyway on the back end. Game Jam's coming up, so we'll see what happens then. Until then, we won't touch it. And they're changing the report abuse system soon. Um, if if it fucking works, I don't... I, sure, who cares? Uh, as far as I'm concerned, it doesn't actually work. So until then, sounds good. Community, no one cares about. And uh, other changes, they've removed the Easter event. The Wall Beast and Lovebridge Swamp Caves will now stay inside the walls. That's nice. And Justice Show is now categorized correctly as Metal Armor by Ava's device. Interesting, I didn't know that. Resolved a crash issue observed inside the POH dungeon under specific circumstances. Doesn't matter. LMS is back on Oswalds, which means Daddy's getting racist during the live streams this week, which are completely advert free and right here on YouTube. So subscribe and ring the bell if you don't want to miss a live stream. It's best content in the market. My name is Ryan Ryan. You're watching Rune News. I'm going to give you guys an update on the Grand Exchange so you can make some big money because, well, with this week's update on the, um, what's it called? The item nerfs that they were doing. A lot of prices are up and down at the moment. So you're going to want to listen to Wade Green on that. You're watching Rune News. My name is Ryan Ryan. This is Rune News, and you're watching Rune News. RuneScape 3 has had an interesting week. So far, they haven't actually received Valamore still or combat achievements in general across the board, much like old school RuneScape has, which is another reason why you should turn around, look at yourself in the mirror, and be happy that you're not playing RuneScape 3 every day because RuneScape 3 is fucking dog shit. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the Grand Exchange segment for Rune News. My name is Wade Green, and this week's a little bit special. Usually, Mod Ash sends in the files, and we just go through them and assess them for the video. This week, he wants a special announcement made because of yesterday's post blog about items changing. This isn't uh, relevant to right now, but you have to remember Ancestral Robes are getting a buff, and this price is likely to push upwards, trending towards closer to 400 mil with the set. It might actually be higher than this right now. But we're likely to see this rise, so we will review this next week and see where we go from here. But Ancestral Rope Tops is now not a good time to buy. Time to sell if you don't want to use it, but I'd recommend holding it and keeping it. It's likely going to go up and stay up. Now for the other side of things, the Void Waker is dropping. This obviously isn't a live price as well. It will continue to drop. We're going to see this again next week. We will see a dip in the Void Waker. Reason being is because they are nerfing the spec, but the spec isn't actually that bad of a nerf. People are panic selling though because they have small brains. So expect to see this go down. If you want a Void Waker, I'd recommend buying when it bottoms out. Still going to be a fantastic spec weapon to use. Still going to be super effective and mega accurate, which is all that matters. And then we have the Tumican Shadow, which is likely to see a small bump in the near future, especially with Augury being buffed with 4% magic damage. Now, the Shadow doesn't actually benefit by tripling that, 
but the shadow will still increase its damage by 4% regardless, which is just even more max hit and an even greater damage proportion, especially inside TOA. This weapon is about to get even better and stronger than before, and inside of the Corrupted Gauntlet, Mage is going to be much more powerful as well with these augury changes. The shadow is likely to see a rise in price in the near future. And then for the mole slippers, they are kind of being ignored at the moment because everyone's panic buying, panic selling useless gear they can't afford to maintain anyway. So people don't actually take note on the real investment and the real way to make money here. So now is actually a good time to buy the mole slippers at 1.1 mil. These are likely to hit 1.5 next week. We're going to see 30 mil by this time next year or mark my words or unsubscribe from the channel. So if you want to invest, make a big buck today, become a rich cunt tomorrow, you're going to want to get yourself some mole slippers. The sooner you buy, the sooner you tell your friends, the sooner yours go up in value. My name is Wade Green. I've got a big dick. Have a good night. Our first Iron Man moment for the week goes to someone who is not an Iron Man. In fact, they're not even playing RuneScape in this aspect. He throws $50 into the casino online and comes out with $1,118.09. This is Fergo, ladies and gentlemen. He's left the wife. He's left the kids. He's got himself a $3.6 million Lamborghini yacht, and he's selling head first through those floods in Dubai right now. He's killing it. If you've got a friend with an addiction problem, especially with gambling, dial 1-800-ADDICT, or just email me at runews420 at hotmail.com, and I'll kick him into gear. Year. Shout out to Fergo for winning some money and um, don't 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 let gambling control your life, boys. As long as you stay up and you stay winning, you're always one one gamble away from your big win. You can you can lose a hundred percent of your money, but you can always win a thousand percent. Back to more RuneScape related content. We have Oomph here. You guys might remember Oomph. He's the uh, well-known racist, homophobic, incel, just overall terrible person that hangs out in the Discord that people can't really stand. He managed to get his Infernal Cape the other day, and also his fan kit, as you can see behind me here, managed to get a solid 500. That's awesome. But aside from the fact that he's racist, homophobic, incel, just a, genuinely a bad person, anti-Semitic, you name it, what's even worse than that is that he uses inventory tags, and that's why we chose this screenshot, so you guys can point and laugh at him for being a useless shit dickhead in the game. So make sure you laugh at oomph down below in the comment section for this embarrassing plugin that is completely unnecessary. What are you, colorblind? What are you, shit? What are you, gay? Come on, man. Get your head out of your ass. Learn to play the game properly. Now, our final moment for the week goes to Mr. 19 Kilo, who has posted a screenshot here, and he says, LFG, Perilous Moon's done at 68 combat with a rune short sword. You're probably wondering why is this being shown as a moment? That means nothing, that's dog shit, and I agree with you completely. This is an example. Don't ever post crap like this in my Discord. I, this isn't even remotely a flex. It's disgusting. Why are you playing like a dickhead? I don't want to see garbage like this again. And that is the end of Rune News this week, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Ryan Ryan. You're watching Rune News. I appreciate you guys. Like and subscribe down below. You're watching Rune News, and you're watching Rune News. This is the easiest room in the raid. It's quite simple. You got a big boy. Look at him, goddamn! Fuck me, look at that boy. It's huge!